You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Well, you've already been to the SG drive in, but now you're wondering what shows do we watch on a Monday night? Well, guys, great news. In lieu of another drive in series, we will be going back to that in the summer. We're doing a more extended series of our HBO Mondays. We're going to be going through some of our favorite series on the HBO channel. Guys, this is Systematic Geekology. We are the Priest to the Geeks. And I specifically am uh, Joshua Knoll, one of the co-hosts of this show, as well as the Whole Church Podcast, do a bunch of other geeky stuff. Um, I have almost finished Star Wars Rebels and watched all of the hobbit extended trilogy and all the lord of the rings extended trilogy this weekend so i've had a had a busy geek weekend uh joe welcome back to your show how's it going (laughs) thanks not too shabby awesome awesome you uh do anything fun last weekend or um so i have been a little bit of a spoiler for an upcoming uh episode i have been binging uh star trek deep space nine and i'm like less than three whole seasons in and i've got like five pages of notes worth of stuff to talk about you know same (laughs) same oh man so this is gonna be a fun one you guys know uh for the intro for these we usually just kind of goof around a little bit tell you guys what to expect wrap it up uh usually these are a little bit fast paced for episodes but this is just an intro we don't have a ton to say other than hey we're doing this hbo series and uh I'm going to throw out some of the ones that's coming up. Some of them I'm really excited for, and some of them I'm uh, I'm glad I'm either not on that episode or I'm going to be on that episode as an antagonist. We'll see. I know at the very least, Joe is going to be antagonizing about, uh, I think it's Witcher is the, is the one that you're anti. <laughs> yep. Joe is a Witcher anti, so we'll be looking forward to that. Um, we're going to be covering uh, Game of Thrones. Naturally, I, I won't be on that. I don't particularly care for it. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm a Lord of the Rings guy. Joe's a Narnia guy. I will. I think we both would agree that both of those series are better than Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. saying something when I call the Lord <laughs> of the Rings universe better than something else. But yeah. Oh, oh, man, that's that's sad to me. Lord of the Rings is having rewatched the movies this weekend. I'm just not convinced there are better movies or ever will be. But we'll move past that. That's for another time. Maybe we'll do a versus. Uh, we are going to be me and you, Joe, we're going to be talking about Titans. That's a fun one. I really enjoy the series and I'm told it's because I don't know a ton about DC comics. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's my favorite part of, um, the HBO world right now is what's happening with DC properties. And yeah, I'll be the first one to admit they don't really reflect the comic. And you know what? Sometimes as long as the storytelling is good, it's okay that it's not a beat for beat retelling of what's happening in the comics. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad the MCU went a different way with Iron Man than some of the comics have <laughs> personally. Um, yeah. You know, I don't think we're doing it, but I, I've also come to appreciate Doom Patrol, even though it's that is a, that is one of those uh, classic what Joe calls 14 year old boy humors. <laughs> and I'm yes. like, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely what this is, but I do enjoy it. I also enjoy Peacemaker, which you would say is 14-year-old boy humor, too. I think I'd probably agree. I just don't watch that one for the humor, but is what it is. Uh, Will and I will be covering Peacemaker when we do that. Uh, We mentioned Witcher. It's going to be TJ and Joe. We're going to have a newsroom, which is probably my favorite HBO series, and not a ton of people know what it is. So we're going to be talking a little bit of politics from like the 2000s. And how the newsroom of HBO covered the the political realm, whatever. You want to talk about it? So that's fun. Um, Sopranos, something Kino's really excited about. So we're looking forward to that. I mentioned Peacemaker. Christian's going to be the other one on that. Me, Christian, and Will. Um, Watchmen, TJ, and Kino. That's interesting. See, I figured you would be on the Watchmen episode. That seems like something you would like. Yeah, I... I enjoyed it it was fine for what i think part of the problem for me with watchmen was when it came out ah i never seen it and i don't think i've ever read the (laughs) watchmen comics either so i'm just kind of really indifferent about it yeah but i've heard good things about it um our flag means death it's another one i'm really excited for it is a 
comedy, historic comedy, I guess, historic fiction comedy of uh, the story of Steed Bonnet and Blackbeard. Um, they they kind of put a spin on that where maybe they have relations, maybe not kind of thing, which got to tell you from a historical standpoint, isn't as crazy as it sounds in the show. Um, but I'll save that for when I'm actually covering the show. Uh, Westworld, you know, TJ again. Uh, Band of Brothers is one I'm really excited for. That also could be my favorite HBO series. It's up there. True Blood. Kino's on that one. Excited for that. We got Curb Your Enthusiasm. I'm going to be on that, but I don't know what it is. That's Will's pick. And then, of course, we'll end with House of Dragon for all you Game of Thrones fans who know, who hear HBO and are just thinking, man, I just want to hear more about Game of Thrones. Good news. We have at least three people on our show who really like Game of Thrones who are going to talk to you about it. It's just not me or Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So which of those are you, do you think you're most excited for? I'm definitely most excited to talk about the DC stuff. Um, you know, I think it's something, I think it's something different than a lot of what else is out there with, uh, comics, with the comic adaptations, I should say. So, um, I'm excited for that. I'm interested to see the different things that get highlighted by the different hosts for these yeah. different uh, IPs because so many of them are so wildly different. And I have a feeling a lot of personality of the hosts are going to come out during this series. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm really excited to hear, even though I don't love Game of Thrones myself, I'm really excited to hear Kino's take on it because I know he's a big fan of it. And I'm just really interested what what his takeaway is from that, because for me, my only takeaway is, man, this is, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just did not click with me at all. So I'm interested to see why it clicked with him so much, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's it's nice when you can get, you know, when you, when you can understand that just because there are aspects of something that you can't bring yourself to enjoy, you can hear it from a different perspective with somebody else that doesn't have the same issue. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Also, I, I got to tell you, some of them like the like the Watchmen episode. I'm definitely just like I'm excited because I trust TJ and Kino's perspective enough that I'm like, I'm just going to hear their review of this show and use that to decide if I want to bother investing my time watching the show. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, of course, there's some that like we individually picked that we're like excited because we picked it like Band of Brothers for me, dude. That is one that I've been watching since well before I knew it was HBO. I had it on DVD at one point. I love that series. It's so powerful as far as things go. And like grade A actors, it's HBO. So, you know, it's high quality production and everything. And it fantastic stuff. Um, was there so I know you mentioned Titans. Was there another pick from you that you were like particularly excited to discuss for on a deeper level than what I don't know usually gets discussed? Um. You know, I I think for Titans, I I can I, I for Titans, I appreciate the fact that they're telling a different side of the typical Batman Robin dynamic, and yeah. you get to see more of the gritty backstory because for those of you that don't know, in the comics. It's not all sunshine and rainbows between <laughs> Batman and Robin, specifically Bruce and Dick. And it's interesting to see the evolution of his character and more of a grounded adaptation mm. of the Titans. I understand for a lot of people, Dick Grayson is kind of like the eternal light of the DC <laughs> universe. So seeing something yeah. a little bit darker centered around him really wasn't everybody's cup of tea. But again, it's one of those things. It's just it's a different take. Yeah, I think a lot for me was the Jason Todd story where I was like, I, I knew there was a story about him. But until I saw Titans, I didn't know anything about it. And that ended up leading me to read some of the comic book stuff and kind of learn about it. But I was like. That was a really compelling part of the show for me, even though, yeah, I'm sure incredibly different from the comics, but it was still just kind of a, oh, man, I, I didn't personally, I didn't see it coming. So I was like, oh, <laughs> and I think part of it, too, is 
they're not afraid to treat characters like we treat them in a comic book story where they could die. Anyone could turn evil or good. You really don't know. So I, I did. I, I like that aspect. So and this is going to be a quicker episode. It's just an introduction. But I had a couple more things that, that I thought stand out about this particular series of topics. Um, first, first, I want to point out, I'm, I'm interested in a couple of the dynamics that we have going on where when you're covering Witcher, you're going to be kind of the antagonist on that episode. And then Will and I are both kind of traded episodes. He really want to do Curb Your Enthusiasm. I never heard of it. I really want to do Newsroom. He never heard of it. So we're both watching for the first time those two series. So that'll be interesting. But um, as far as like Witcher, what what can people expect from that dynamic of you kind of playing the antagonist going in talking about that show? So um, one of my biggest issues with Witcher is one of the same issues that I have with Game of Thrones. Hmm. Shock value for shock value's sake, mm-hmm. when there's not a lot of substance behind it, yeah, isn't something that I'm necessarily a fan of. On top of that, there's a very particular type of story that and, and storytelling device that Witcher uses that I think is incredibly lazy. Now, spoilers, though, for for the other half of that, for all of you Witcher fans out there, the other part of the conversation, and this is going to be a bit of what TJ brings to the table, is (laughs) from what I hear, the show is the weakest part of the Witcher, the overall Witcher IP. Yeah, I was going to ask if you ever played the game. I have not played the game. Um, I've heard a lot about... um, uh, about how good it is um but i i haven't played it myself oh huh. okay interesting yeah but i mean getting to the shock value that that was actually the last thing i wanted to cover if we're talking about hbo as a whole i think that's one thing that's probably shocking to some people that a christian podcast is going to be talking about hbo because you, you know th- there are some that you know we're a lot more comfortable with halloween movies with magic that kind of stuff but it kind of seems like it's a different line when you're talking about these shows that a lot of them have full nudity a lot of them have a ton of swearing in it um when i talk about band of brothers when i talk about gore that is a gory show how as christians do we evaluate these things i guess is sort of what i'm thinking of um i think me and you probably stand more on the same ground of is it done with purpose is it adding something or is it just done for the sake of being grotesque yeah that's that's a big part of it um there it there does have to be room in all of this to to state that what affects me might not affect the next person and the thing about hbo is we're we're pretty firmly in um, the territory of oh, more adult oriented programming. Like for yeah. for anybody who doesn't know, um, one of the biggest things that got everybody in a in a fuss about um, Titans before anything else was seen or said or known about the show is Nightwing is in the you know he he. he beats the tar out of a bunch of bad guys and then looks at the camera and goes F Batman. Obviously I'm, I'm censoring. We're a family friendly show. Um, so for me hearing cursing, not really a huge thing for me, certain types of like physicality and all of that, not really a big thing. I'm not going to lie. The older I get, the more I'm like, meh, tell me a good story. You know what I mean? And if you throw in an action set piece or two along the way, cool. I like a good action set piece as much as the next guy, but it doesn't just have to be people beating the tar out of each other for 45 minutes straight. I'm not saying that's what Titans is, but I'm just saying, you know, so so, yeah, I will always, I will always sound the, sound the bell for, um, for quality storytelling, above Mm -hmm. anything else like above anything else so if if the characters are weak if the storytelling is weak but you're Mm -hmm. trying to get a message across i don't necessarily care how good the message was was conveyed if the storytelling device 
that transmitted it sucks. So it's, yeah. it's kind of, this is one of those areas where it's going to be potentially more than other areas that we've covered. Mm-hmm. Very subjective about where exactly that line is. Yeah. I, um, I'll be honest, part of why I never finished Game of Thrones was because it was so grotesque. It wasn't that my soul couldn't handle it. It was just kind of, it made me uncomfortable. So I didn't watch it, right? Um, There definitely are, for me, I'm a little bit more sensitive to more sexual themed kind of stuff. But the thing is, if it's bothering me, I just stop watching it. Or, you know, yeah. skip the scene, whatever. And there there are some places, and here's just, just to highlight a few things. There's some things is that I feel like, for me personally, I don't think cussing's a sin. I think cursing is a sin. And there is a difference. If we want to get into it, uh, that's for another Christian podcast at some time. But that's just a thing. Um, but I do think shows like, um, we we mentioned Doom Patrol. I think it cusses just for the sake of, haha, isn't it funny how many F-bombs were in there? Right. I'm guilty of enjoying the show. I don't know why I enjoy the show, but that is something that I can point to be like, yeah, that's not done well. Um, if you look at Newsroom, one of my favorites, he's, you know, near the beginning, he's talking about, um, you know, if Republicans are this, why do they always lose? It? Or no, I forget what it was. If Republicans something, but then when he gets to the Democrats, is like, if they're so GD smart, why do they lose so GD often? And he gets really passionate and he calls out both sides and it's at the very beginning, but it's a powerful moment because of the cursing. And it's one of those where I'm not, not advocating people curse more often, but it's one of those where I'm like, I don't feel like that was done in a way that was, you know, ha ha cursing, you know, anything like that. I think it actually added to the story at that point that the character was that angry. It added something. Um, when you talk about Band of Brothers, the gore there, it, it adds something to the story because the point is to show you a glimpse of what war really is like. That makes sense to me. But then you get to some places where it's like Peacemaker. There's definitely some points that are really gory for no reason other than ha ha gore. Gore's not funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so I'll rapid fire here real quick with a couple (laughs) of them since these aren't going to be shows that I'm uh, on for the most part. Um, You know, I I can juxtapose what I don't like about Game of Thrones with what I don't like about um, uh, about Witcher. Right. One Mm -hmm. is just meh. It's just grotesqueness for grotesqueness sake. So for anybody who wants to know exactly where not to start with Game of Thrones, don't start with the episode that they call The Red Wedding. It is not good. It's it's a fundamentally not good episode. And especially if you're not a fan of of violence. Um, There's a particular scene that just doesn't, doesn't need to happen. Pregnant woman stabbed. Not a fan at all in any way, shape or form. Um, but I don't think it adds anything. I think it's just, Mm. let's, let's just write, let's just ratchet up the gore factor for gore factor's sake. Not, not good. Something like Witcher and the way that season two ends, that disturbed my soul. Like that was Mm. not okay. And, and, and for me. And so I can look at those and say, okay, that's my opinion. And where my, where I'm at at a soul level, neither one of those are overarching um, statements to be made about anybody who comes across the IP. You know, you take something like like Doom Patrol, and it's it's fourteen year old boy humor. It just <laughs> Absolutely. like it's it's honestly just made to be to be shock jock, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. and and I could take or leave that. Whereas something like Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb Your Enthusiasm is hilarious. It's incredibly sarcastic. Good to know. <laughs> it's incredibly dry, like super, super sarcastic, but it's hilarious. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it a lot of that comes down to personal taste. Yeah. And what you'll find, and we won't have a ton of these interactions going throughout, I, I don't think, but you'll find like for me, Game of Thrones is a little too much for me, not necessarily for my soul, just for my comfort level. Right. But I'm willing to bet whatever message Kino gets out of it and he pulls from it. And just because I know Kino, I will probably agree with the message that he cares about, even though I won't agree with him about that show. (laughs) 
Right, right. You take somebody like Kino and you you can you have his background and his experience base and his you know, everything that makes up Kino and he can watch this thing and be like, Okay, my I can handle the parts that other people fall off at and so I'm not fixated there, which opens me up to see other things or or focus on other things and stuff like that. And that's part of why, you know, for better or for worse, HBO has a way of putting out programs. And I didn't even touch on the show <laughs> of our generation, Sopranos, right? Sopranos was the show that put HBO on the map in a lot of in a lot of regards. And I I, you know, have talked about those other shows and their varying degrees of violence and stuff like that. I'm not going to play with y'all. Sopranos is a violent show. It's not it's not like Sunshine and Rainbow. So this is not me trying to sit on my righteous holy ground that says that says I can't handle violence mm-hmm. on on TV. Like no no, I'm I'm an East Coaster that comes from a very uh mm-hmm. Italian family. <laughs> I talked about that. Yeah. Go, go, go! Listen to the episode between with Will and I talking about the Godfather. I talk about some of uh, some <laughs> of my past and all of that kind of stuff. So, so for for me, I look at something like Sopranos, and I'm like, man, that that was a really compelling character story, and there was a lot of there was a lot of depth there. Whereas other mm-hmm. people would see that and be like, ah, it's another gory mobster movie. And so I think with yeah. each one of these, more so than any of the other miniseries that we've done i think these will be reflective of the hosts in a different kind of way than y'all have mm-hmm. seen or heard in the past oh yeah yeah and i mean you mentioned sopranos and I've, already, I've already mentioned um band of brothers but i completely understand the people who look at that and think that it's just all gore and what is the point that's just people blowing each other up for however long I understand that perspective. I don't hold it naturally, but you know, it's, I grew up with my grandfather hearing stories and my uncle t- different stories. You know, um, I, <laughs> I've always been friends with people who are, you know, military for whatever reason. I don't have any experience with that, but because I know of that stuff, I have a deeper connection than maybe other people will on that are on our team even. So, you know, you just got to be open to disagreeing about the shows and kind of seeing past that and having these deeper conversations. I think that's what I'm really excited about going forward with this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, Joe, if uh, if you don't have anything else, I wanted to. I know we, we did this with um, the drive-ins. But when you're at home and you have a, a TV night, do you have a go-to snack at home? Uh, yeah. So um, it's actually somewhat newer for me. Um this is going to sound ridiculous. Rice cakes <laughs> with okay. peanut butter. Yeah, that does sound ridiculous. Yeah, I so okay. I'm uh, training or I have been training. It's a long story um, <laughs> for my next athletic endeavor. And so I had to find something that works Ooh. around a specific set of macros. And so I take uh, powdered peanut butter and yeah. Swerve sweetener, which is like a mm. like a sugar alcohol based uh, sweetener, and sure. make make up peanut butter and have it with rice cakes. Huh. Wow, that is way different from mine. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have sure a few. That, that is I have a few. nothing like what you were expecting <laughs> here. That's yeah, that was funny. I have I have a few really junky ones. So like when I say I like junk food, like junk food, junk food. Yeah. If I'm on a like a TV binge and I don't care what I'm eating right now time. One of the things I like to do is I make homemade macaroni and cheese, not the hamburger helper box because that stuff's garbage. Homemade macaroni and cheese and add my own beef and bacon, like fresh beef and, you know, cooked bacon to it. And I'll just make a huge crock pot of it and be like, I'm watching this show for like a solid like day or two. And I'm just going to. This is just my meal whenever I'm hungry. I'm just going to get up and get a bowl and it's fine. <laughs> somewhere, 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 my wife is, is cringing. Very happy to hear that. Oh, and okay. Thought... She's a huge uh, homemade mac and cheese fan. Oh, God, I love mac and cheese. Um, also, just a recent random one I heard from another podcast uh, I was listening to. 
I, I heard it's really great if instead of getting a bowl of popcorn, you ate dry honeycombs just as a snack. And I'm interested to try it. I'll let okay. you know. I'm going to try it and let you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, I well, will. <laughs> uh, so so I feel like I have to give one that is non current. <laughs> um, we uh, Brownies are Ooh, like that's a good one. My thing. Like I love pe- uh, I love peanut butter, too. But like, yeah, a good brownie is Ooh, yeah. is phenomenal. Like I'll make a tray of brownies and like, you know, if I'm binging, some, if I'm binging a show or something like that, next thing you know, half the tray has gone. Oh, man, man. Do you ice cream with your brownies or no? Sometimes. Mm, yeah, I, I like I like ice cream and brownie. All right, guys. Well, now I'm very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and that being said, I, I hope you guys are looking forward to this series as much as we are and are going to bear with us when maybe we're talking about stuff that you're less comfortable with on a show and hear the deeper message the deeper stuff what we're getting ready to talk about and you know for a lot of these shows and this kind of goes with some of the um the media that comes from places like hbo or comes from these non-typical sources like not it's this isn't ne- network tv or this isn't the newest Netflix original or something along those lines. So a lot of times I find with people, they, they're they almost waiting for permission to watch it, especially from the Christian yeah. community. So take a listen, listen to what the what the um, the hosts have to say about it. And if you know if you mm. trust the opinions of the ho- uh, of the hosts, then go for it. Otherwise, do what feels comfortable for you with zero shame. You know, <laughs> hopefully we we turn you guys on to something and you absolutely love it and it's wonderful. <laughs> Sunshine rainbows, you found your new favorite show. Awesome. But if that if if I understand that we're we're all going to be coming at this from different perspectives. And for each one of us that are on one of these shows, remember, we at least tried it. Yeah. So don't be afraid to try something with the idea that you might not stick with it. Just because you Mm. watch an episode of something doesn't mean you're obligated to binge the rest of it. Yeah. Also, it's okay if you get 10 minutes in and go, this is too much for me and just quit. That's fine, guys. Yeah, totally fine. Okay. Uh, And remember, you know, we say this all the time. You can be a Christian. You can be a geek without being a jerk. So just, you know, don't be a jerk about it. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Cool. Move on. Right. And of course, uh, one other thing. Remember, we're all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.